Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. My name is Daniel, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you why I haven't deleased in RV transport. Uh, many people have more recently due to just the lack of inventory, the lack of trailers to be pulled, and uh, I understand why somebody might uh, delease or end the contract uh, as far as being a commercial driver goes. Uh, however, I do think it's important to think through uh, for you in your personal situation, uh, what is the best choice for you? What are the pros? What are the cons? And then ultimately, how do you apply that to your exact situation? Um, I know what I have done and what I believe and where I'm at, but maybe in this video, this can help you uh, be able to determine that for yourself and reevaluate this uh, if you already have thought through this before. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So what are the pros for you to delease in RV transport? Uh, I think number one right off the bat you're going to probably think about is you're going to have an immediate savings as far as insurance goes. So your commercial insurance, your unladen, uh, your bobtail, whatever it actually is for you that your company requires, um, you're going to have an immediate savings towards that commercial insurance. Um, that can be canceled immediately. You'll get the prorated money back if you've already paid for that month. Uh, you know, that's really going to be an immediate cash uh, you know, stopping the bleeding, uh, essentially for you, uh, as a commercial driver. So, uh, number one, you're going to have some savings as far as the insurance goes. Uh, number two, you're probably going to be able to find a job that's going to be more consistent than RV transport, depending on your background, your skills, uh, your local market, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, you're probably going to be able to find something that's going to be more consistent than RV transport. RV transport is consistently inconsistent. So uh, for you, you're probably going to be able to find a job, maybe uh, higher pay or lower pay. I don't know what that would look like. Um, being able to find another job that would be consistent, that you would be able to have that reliability uh, to be able to bring home those paychecks. So that's a pro as far as deleasing goes uh, in RV transport. Uh, along with that means you might not actually need your truck uh, for any uses as far as the new job is concerned. Uh, unless you really just like that truck, uh, if you have a note, uh, if you owe somebody money for that truck that you've been using commercially, you're probably going to want to sell that truck so that you don't have that debt ongoing, just like the uh, commercial insurance was. So uh, almost immediately or somewhat immediately, uh, you can immediately stop the the hemorrhaging, stop the, the cash uh, outflow uh, of the insurance as well as the actual truck goes. So um, if you were to find that new job, you're going to have that stability. Uh, you're going to be able to basically stop paying for the truck, the insurance, and really get things back on track as far as finance goes. And ultimately with this, I think you're just going to have the peace of mind. You're going to have that financial stability, hopefully with that newer job uh, to be able to pay your bills and almost immediately cut down a good chunk of your previous bills that you were having to pay when there were just no campers to be hauling. There's nothing new under the sun. These points are not anything that you haven't already thought of or probably heard somebody else talk about. Um, but I think this does kind of set the foundation as far as what are the pros to actually deleasing. And I think these are pretty valid, important, critical reasons why somebody might need to or might want to uh, make that decision to delease, to end the contract uh, and to go into some other line of work. Since making any decision has many pros and many cons. Uh, these are just simply the ones that stick out to me the most. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below if you have any other ones you'd like to add to this, uh, but this is not comprehensive. So uh, moving on to the cons. What are the cons of you deleasing uh, your truck in RV transport? What does that really look like? I think the first thing that sticks out to me, if you were to delease from RV transport and make a emotional rash decision very quickly, is that you might not already have work lined up. You might already be putting in applications elsewhere, but if you don't already have something lined up in a start date, you potentially, first off, you might be missing out on some loads. Um, this doesn't mean you're going to be missing out on a full loaded week every single week. However, in the meantime, it may be worth it to stay leased on for the possibility that you could get a load. I think making rash emotional decisions can really put you in a tough position going down the road. So whether you're going towards something or running away from something, 
making it based off of your emotions is probably the worst thing you could do, uh, not really critically thinking through it. Which leads me to my next thought is that you might be able to balance RV transport and another job, potentially. It's not a guarantee. It's not a absolute no. But there are other options out there that maybe could be flexible for you. Uh, maybe it does make sense to stick in RV transport, even though you're not actually going to be getting loads constantly. But there is a side job. There is a either a part-time or a full-time that maybe does have some degree of flexibility as far as you know, a week on. And then if you, if you give enough notice, uh, you could get, you know, several days off for a load or something like that to where you could balance those two jobs kind of working in harmony. If you've done your due diligence and talked through everything with that new employer, the next con going against you deleasing or me deleasing in RV transport is that right now, in our current market, there's probably a lot of other people in the same situation, in the same boat. So the market is saturated right now with trucks and with equipment, especially used trucks and equipment. For you to sell and to get rid of everything right now may be the worst possible time because everybody else is seemingly doing that. So that probably means you're going to be getting a very low evaluation of the value of your truck, possibly of the value of the equipment. I would say probably specifically in RV transport, uh, selling to other drivers. Um, you're going to be really just taken to the cleaners as far as selling the equipment, selling the truck and everything else that you've got in your bed uh, going on for your business. I think that's kind of an insult to injury. Um, if you were to want to get out of RV transport, you're going to probably take a good beating financially as far as actually selling this equipment. So um, that's definitely a con as far as going and deleasing right now in RV transport when a lot of other people are doing the same thing. Now, as I said, this is not comprehensive. This is just major pain points that I see sticking out uh, for or against. And so with that comes the question, well, are you leaving RV transport now to jump ship entirely? And that's just, that's just its own thing. Or are you wanting to come back to RV transport down the road at some point? Maybe not in three months, but maybe in a year. What does that look like for you? What, what are your long-term plans uh, to the degree that you can plan and can count on things uh, being able to be there in the future? Um, what are your plans for uh, your truck, for your equipment? If you were to plan on returning to RV transport at some point down the road, you're probably going to be paying if you've already sold your truck and the equipment and already taken a beating on one end with getting a pretty low evaluation for that used truck and equipment. You're probably going to have just as much of a beating on the other end if you were to come back to RV transport down the road. You're probably going to be paying way more money than you really wanted to due to inflation, due to if you're getting back into RV transport, there's probably a reason. And that reason is probably not just only known to you as far as the market goes. There's probably other people going to be jumping back into the market, back into RV transport down the road when things do pick up, when things do rebound and eventually somewhat smooth out as, as smooth as we can get in RV transport. Um, it's just, a, it's just a different ball game. So it's like taking, taking a beating, you know, walking out the door. And then when you walk back in, um, I think financially you're going to get hit pretty hard. So for me, um, that's definitely a con to deleasing. And ultimately, uh, if you were to want to come back, I wouldn't want to necessarily get rid of the equipment if I could afford to, because you're probably going to be hit pretty hard on the way back in at some point. So if you are planning on returning to RV transport down the road, there's some other considerations we need to talk through. So as you very well know, if you've already become a RV transporter, then you would have applied, you would have leased your truck on, gone through orientation, gone through the whole process of getting leased on as a commercial driver. So with that comes the time that it's going to take to get back into RV transport. Many times in the Facebook groups that a lot of transporters are in, there are people who say, yeah, um, my orientation date is in this month. And generally, oftentimes that is months away. 
So if you were to de-lease and to get out of RV transport, you're going to have to go through that whole process again. It could take months. Uh, there could be a long lag time for you to actually get leased on, to get to orientation, and to go through the whole thing again. So not only are you going to be running into the time issue uh, that we all probably have gone through waiting to get even to orientation, but the people who you do try to apply to again, maybe their qualifications have changed. Depending on the season of the industry, the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, RV transport companies, as you very well know or have heard, there's times where certain companies will raise their requirements when it's conducive to their business. They might not be as desperate as they normally are. They might be raising the bar as far as qualifications go, which potentially could make you outside of the bounds where you once were and everything was fine as a transporter underneath their authority, leased on to them. Well, now, since you have deleased and now you're coming back to them, if you're coming back to them while their qualifications are higher than maybe, you know, you don't have a CDLA, maybe you don't have two, three years experience. Maybe it has been more than a certain amount of time that they would like to see it, you know, a timing between companies. Like there's lots of different factors with this and you could potentially be thinking you're coming right back into the industry business as usual and find out, uh oh, the company I wanted to go with, the company that I was leased onto for however long, now has higher requirements and I might not even meet those requirements. How crazy would that be? So if you were to de-lease from a transport company, this is definitely a con. You're potentially taking a risk by de-leasing and then eventually coming back, who knows what that really looks like for you. So um, that's definitely a, a thought to consider. Uh, the qualifications could change and that might put you outside uh, of the box as far as a driver qualifications or maybe even your truck qualifications. Next is the time wasted going through orientation again. If you've been a transport driver, not too many things change as far as the doing of the work. Driving down the road, making sure everything's attached and safe, good to go. Uh, things for DOT, things for logbook stuff may change. You driving down the road doesn't. So you're going to be wasting time going through orientation again, probably with a lot of other people who are thinking the same thing because one of the good reasons why you're probably coming back is because there's now more loads, lots of them. Everybody's talking about it. There's, there's FOMO, fear of missing out. There's lots of loads that you can just be turning and burning, just rolling, making things happen. Well, the truth is, if you heard about it, other people have heard about it, which means orientations are going to be packed. It is going to take that time to, to, go, to go through orientation. And who knows how long it's going to take to be able to get through all that. The last few things, as far as you de-leasing from a transport company and then leasing back onto them later on, is that you're probably going to miss out or lose your safe driver miles, your driver reward system, whatever that may be for you at your company you're probably going to be set back to zero, I would assume. I can't say for certainty on that, uh, but I would assume if you de-lease and then at some point you come back, I would assume you're considered a new driver. So that's just a thought. I don't have that in concrete evidence. I don't know that for sure for every single company out there. Uh, maybe they would say, oh, you just picked up right where you left off as far as your rewards uh, or your safe uh, mileage club, whatever that may be. That's potentially something you could miss out on as well as, and I, this is also something I don't know about, so I'm just throwing it out there. But if you did have a lapse in your commercial insurance for some time, however long it was between you deleasing and coming back, I would assume it's it's possible that the insurance company that you go with, whether it was the same one from as before or a new one, if you price shopped and found somebody better, 
is that you're possibly going to have a higher rate due to the lapse or not having this coverage for a certain amount of time. I know if you don't have any insurance at all on your vehicle and something happens and you, you go back to get insurance, um, I'm pretty sure you get nailed as far as being un, you know, not insured period. Uh, their, you know, regular insurance is going to hit you pretty hard for that. I don't know if it's the same way as far as commercial insurance goes, having that lapse in coverage, maybe it's not, but if it, but if it is, if, if that's the case, that that's just a further insult to injury. So the reward, Awards and the insurance are two possible uh, potential things that could bite you. Uh, insult to injury, like I said, uh, that could be just like, man, the cons of the, me deleasing is bigger than just stopping my truck payment and insurance payment, selling the truck, and then I'll come back and everything will be all right. It'll all be the same. I just don't think that's the case. I think it's a much bigger picture overall, and it's a higher cost maybe in either direction uh, for whatever you're going to be going and doing. So all of this and much more, probably more directly uh, catered to your situation. Um, you just should write out some pros and some cons. Um, there's a lot of things to this. Um, as far as you deleasing and coming back, as far as you deleasing and saying, I'm done. I just, I can't go through this roller coaster ride in RV transport or in transportation in general. I just need stability. And believe me, I don't blame you. I'm not here to throw stones. Maybe there's some people who, who say, oh, you just, you know, you, you're not man enough. You're not this or that or whatever. Like the truth is like if, if you're bleeding financially and you're just sitting there with no loads or very, very few and you can't pay your bills, like I get it. So for me, thinking through this, what am I doing? Why have I not deleased for me? From this list and some other things that are more personal, the pros and the cons, as I weigh them and I balance them accordingly, and even talking with my wife about this, I do have other streams of income. For me, I have my dumpster business. I have other very much smaller uh, other jobs and little things that I'm able to supplement from. I don't have all of the money coming in that I used to completely just from RV transport, but the bases are covered and... I believe long term, it's more valuable to me to stay leased on, potentially just eating the insurance cost, um, doing what I have to do <laughs> to get through this and looking for that light at the end of the tunnel, knowing that not all of my eggs are in one basket. Um, I have other options to me and I'm using them. I'm going after those things currently right now when there's very few loads out there. So whether you're watching this video at the end of 2022, uh, after the last couple of years that have been pretty, pretty ridiculous, pretty wild, pretty, uh, up and down. I think there's a considerable amount of pros and cons that you need to weigh for your certain situation, for your exact, uh, position in life, what's going on, what's going on around you, what skills, what tools, what equipment, what everything that you have, put everything down on paper. Think through it. Talk through stuff. Ask people that you trust that you want to get wise counsel from. Find out. See what their thoughts are. Um, ultimately, it's you making the decision, and you're the one who has to live with that decision. Uh, but I think it's good to spread everything out on the table and to go through each and everything and say, is this worth it? Is that worth it? Uh, I don't know. You know, really taking the time to talk through this rather than just emotionally responding to, well, there's no loads and I'm just fed up and I'm just going to go do my own thing, blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever. Thinking there's just one absolute option over here and one absolute option over there. Many times it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray area and it's not just a cookie cutter answer. I think there's a lot of gray area in between the absolute yes and absolute no as far as deleasing and getting out of RV transport uh, for you. I can't make the decision. You need to uh, let us know down in the comments below if there's anything you'd like to add to this list of pros of deleasing or cons of deleasing.
Uh, what does this really look like for you in your situation? If you want to share and contribute to the conversation, please do that in the comments. Uh, if you want to subscribe, hit the like button. Um, I'm only here to try to help encourage people to talk through these things and to help us to think critically through this whole process of what it looks like and what the consequences are for doing this or doing that. Whatever we're doing in business, it shouldn't be led by emotion. I believe we should go off of our facts and the information given to us uh, and not just a lashing out response. So um, I hope this was a help to you. Have a great day, guys. Stay safe and God bless.